Future Future 133, Deadpool Complete Collection and Volume Strips. Uh, so I, I've got some comics here I've read this week. I've got some comics that I've read a couple of weeks ago that I don't think I managed to fit in. Uh, that would be the Batman. I don't think I've spoken about this Batman, but we'll get to that. Right, so Deadpool The Complete Collection is a massive stack of badass Deadpool comics. It, I swear to God on the side it says it's volume one, but it really does feel like it starts in the middle. That's Marvel continuity for you. Um, it starts off with uh, Wolverine comics, uh, because it starts off with Deadpool trying to kill Wolverine, and eventually he takes offense to this, and it turns into an actual fight. Uh, but because this takes place within the pages of Wolverine, the comic, Wolverine Origins, uh, it's actually a story about Wolverine, and Deadpool is technically the bad guy, in so far as he can be. Uh, the next arc is Deadpool versus the Skrulls. This takes place during the Skrull invasion, which I don't know when that was. That was probably 2000 and something, before 2010 maybe. Very interesting time in the Marvel Universe. Deadpool uh, joins the Skrull army after they can't kill him, and then he betrays them, and then he gives all the information. He's trying to send it to Nick Fury. It ends up with Norman Osborn, uh, and then Deadpool decides he's going to go get Norman Osborn to give him $100 million because, hey, he did the job someone needs to pay, and it wouldn't be Nick Fury now, would it? He doesn't pay for jobs that go tits up, even though the Skrull invasion was stopped. Uh, Norman Osborn tries to kill Deadpool, De 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 Pull in a, a major a, a lot of ways. The best one in this collection being Bullseye, uh, dressed up as Hawkeye because he's a member of the Thunderbolts, uh, and they form this bizarre friendship frenemy thing. It's great. Uh, Deadpool is at its best when it's using characters from other series, and I am a big fan of Bullseye. The book also at the end has a like a history of Deadpool that clearly spans the nineteen nineties. Uh, you can tell from the dodgy art. Uh, I learned a lot about Deadpool as a character because I have never actually wikied him. Uh, yeah, this was a strange weekend where I got like clickbaited by comic tropes. Uh, he asked the question, Chris asked, is Mark Bakley a great Spider-Man artist? And I don't know why he asked that question because he is. Uh, and there was nothing contentious in the video. I wouldn't have watched it if he'd phrased it differently, but you know what, I, get to, I got to see some good Spider-Man art. It's, it's fine. Uh, so yeah, Batman Private Casebook is a collection of what would seem to be completely unrelated, almost allegorical Batman stories. Uh, the thing with Batman is I think there are so many different Batman titles, it can't all be the continuity of one character at this point, it's a little bit absurd. But it starts basically with Batman going hard, Ra's al Ghul, or Ra's al Ghul, comes to Gotham, Batman throws him out of building and drugs him up and sends him to Arkham under a false alias. Uh, because Batman doesn't kill, but Batman doesn't give a fuck about human rights. So, <laughs> so there you go. Uh, Batman then is given some kind of special armor called uh, the Armor of the Bat that makes him murderous, maybe a bit stronger, maybe a bit faster. He uncovers its secret. Uh, it's a strange story, and, it, and it's one of those things where you think, is this ca canon? Uh, who knows? And also with this book, who cares? Uh, the art's great all the way through, but uh, and then then he has this thing with uh, you know I've forgotten the name of it Scarface the puppet, uh, Zatara or Zantana or whatever her name is along for the ride and she's kind of like this bizarre love interest. It doesn't go anywhere because it never does with Batman, but you know when when Bruce Wayne shows up, the stories get a bit more interesting and the book ends with a murder mystery where both Batman and the Riddler are trying to solve it, and they end up in this chat room with some monkey in a suit. Dare I say he might be the most interesting character in the in the entire book, just because I don't know who he is and I'd actually rather like someone to explain that one to me. But anyway, moving on. Bolland Strips, uh, as you can see, it was on sale for a fiver and I wasn't even going to pick it up. It was, it was at Gosh Comics. And Brian Bolland is my favourite Western artist, period. Uh, he is also the writer of these things. Uh, it's a collection of short... Um, cartoons, comic strips that, that don't really have any major continuity. The actress in The Bishop is named after an idiom I've never bloody heard of, but the whole thing is written in rhyming couplets uh, with exquisite art, and um, 
this is a story about both the actress and the bishop trying to to talk to God, uh, and and it's you know this one is about a monster in the garden shed that may or may not be there. It's it's I don't know if it's fair to call this quintessentially British, but it's very witty, it's very whimsical, it's subtle, it's nuanced, and it's clever. I'm a fan of the writing as much of the art. Uh, Brian Bolland remains uh, quality through and through. Uh, Mr. Mamoulian is a is a bizarre uh, serial with this kind of weird middle-aged mustachioed man uh, who's who's clever for who he is, but probably its its strength is the bizarre cast that involves like deranged spooks, uh, punks who aren't quite sure who they are, and all kinds of things. And then towards the back of the book is is like a is like a fairy tale, but he's he's written it in a kind of blasé, doesn't give a fuck kind of way about uh, you know the princess who kisses the toad and the toad stays a toad. <laughs> Surprise! But what 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 is funny is it turns out the rock he's standing on is actually the prince that was turned uh, into something else by magic. Uh, and it was the Mister Mamoulian comic strip that actually made me do a smiley show uh, while I was on the security course, just because on one day there was literally nothing going on. Uh, I'm still not drawing an awful lot, but uh, it's you know I'm st I'm doing bits and pieces. Right, so sad clown of the week would be. Quite possibly the new Hellboy movie. I haven't seen it. I might be going to see it with a friend. And it's basically being review bombed. But then it might not be being review bombed. It might just be shit. <laughs> Critics hate it. Uh, other people, the general public, it's a mixed bag. It seems like if you liked the last two Hellboy films, which I did, you probably won't like this one. But it's very obvious from the trailers that this book, this film takes an incredible amount of its content and its plot from the Hellboy comics directly uh, and towards the end of the comics as well. The whole thing with the sword and, and the, the flame crown above his head uh, and the woman who Milia Jovovich plays, I know who she's supposed to be. The, all of this takes place almost like in the last act of the Hellboy series. That's If, if this is to be a new a reboot of the franchise starting at the end isn't very clever. That probably is one of the main reasons why people who haven't read Hellboy think this film is hot shit. Uh, but it might just be that it's a bad film. I don't know. I may or may not go watch this in a couple of weeks. I might go see Shazam. We'll see. But that brings us to the end of Pitch Kuchu 133, and I'll see you next time.